All right. Um, so the, the, the real difference between what we did on day one with just the cross sections and what we're going to do today is we're going to basically take these curves and revolve them around things. Um, it may be revolved in such a way that it's a complete solid. It may be revolved in such a way that there's sort of a cylindrical hole in the middle of it, okay? And that's really the difference uh, between the disc and washers. It, for those of you who don't know, when you're dealing with nuts and bolts and you screw stuff together, there's a washer and the, the goes over the bolt and it kind of holds it in place. So uh, prevents the bolt from going through the hole. That's why it's called a washer. It has nothing to do with washing anything. Um, so this is you know, just a quick little definition. If I take a circular cross section, so in day one we looked at all kinds of different we did semicircles, there were squares, there were rectangles, triangles that could be um, the cross sections. Now we're going to take, instead of a semicircle, we're going to rotate it around a, an axis or another line. And um, then what our cross section will be is a circle. And they call them, in calculus, we call them disks. And essentially what we're going to do is take an infinite number of disks and find the areas of those, add them up, and that's how we're gonna get our volume of that particular solid, okay? A lot of problems in this section are gonna be just set up, not actually solved. And so one of the things you have to be careful of, and some of you did this on the last test and or quiz, is sometimes, and I, and I know it's like, you're trying to figure out when do I stop simplifying? When do I just leave it as is? And, and some of you got in a little trouble because you tried to continue to simplify and then you messed that part up. So just be careful with that. A lot of these setup problems, literally set up and walk away from it. Don't try to make it any simpler than, than it is because that's where some of you can get in trouble. Anyway, um, since we're talking about circles, you know, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So that's where this kind of disk formula comes from, right? It's, this is really, we're gonna, we're gonna disregard the pi as it's a constant, it's gonna go out in front. We're gonna integrate from A to B, and then we just need to know the radius. We to know the radius, we can just plug it in, and then we can walk away from it, for the most part. Sometimes it'll ask you to actually figure out what the, what the volume is. And dx or dy, depending on whether we're revolving it or rotating it vertically or horizontally. Okay. And the problem will tell you that. Here's an example, and they do a little bit of a sketch, which I kind of liked their drawing, so I didn't try to improve upon it. Um, but essentially what we're going to do, what's, what's happening here is this parabola looks like, yeah, y equals x squared, is going to rotate um, about the line y equals 0, and it has a boundary at x equals 1. So essentially what it's going to be doing is rotating about this axis right here. And so since it's connected to the axis to begin with, and it's going to rotate about that axis, there's not going to be a hole in the middle of it. So this is a good picture. So here I'm going to have a circle, then another circle, and another circle, and another circle. And so these circles here kind of layered on each other, eventually become so small you can't really even see them. And so um, you have to just kind of, it's like a Hershey's Kiss. There you go. I mean, kind of on the side. Do you guys know why it's called a Hershey's Kiss? Because the little machine that makes them looks like it's kissing the... That's why it does that. Okay. All right. Do you want to try this first and see how, how it goes? Or do you want me to go through this one first? Okay, let's try it. All right, let's see how we did here. Um, first off, my... ...setup's going to look like this. My, my radius, okay, this height 
here is that y, y is x squared. So, so the radius of each circle is y, and since y is x squared, that's why I've got the x squared squared from 0 to 1. x0, x1, and then, of course, it's dx. And a lot of the drawings, they draw this little width as dx um, just to sort of indicate that that's the change in x. Sometimes you'll see that <coughs> written like that. Okay? How many had that? How many made it x to the fourth? Like, honestly, for problems like this, get away from doing that. I know, I know, think about, think about where I was at the beginning of the year wanting to simplify all this and factor things, and, and you were like, wow, you don't need to do that. It's kind of the same thing here. Kind of, kind of let, try to let that go. Um, all right, let's look at one. Now this one is actually saying find the volume. One of the things that's, what's one of the things that you notice that's very different here from the last example? It does find it, yes. What else? Just one point. About the y-axis. There you go. What would Grant were you saying? Yeah, you, you probably want to graph this. Okay. If, if, if it was the best, again, just going back to the, the sort of theme of this unit. If you can see it, it's easier to imagine what's happening. So I definitely would encourage you to, to draw the uh, area in quadrant one that we're talking about that is going to be rotated. And then before you do that, let's, so why don't you go ahead and do that part. Why don't you set it up, don't solve it yet. And be, because if uh, that way we can all be on the same page and make sure that we have it set up correctly uh, before we proceed. But let's see how we did here, okay. Um, like we indicated, probably drawing it was a good idea first. This is my change in y now. Okay, so we're, we're, di we're integrating with respect to y since we're going to rotate it about the y-axis. All right, they gave us an upper bound as well, y equals 4. So I have this portion of the filled-in parabola that's going to rotate about the y-axis. Okay, how many had a drawing that looks kind of like that? Okay, good. Um, so then, since I'm, I'm going to rotate it about the line x equals 0, what has to change here? Yeah, this has to be in terms of x instead of in terms of y. So, my first move. Okay. And since we're talking about the first quadrant, we don't have to make it we don't have to worry about negative because technically when we screw root both sides, right? It should be negative uh, as well, plus or minus when I square root. But since we, we've already established that we're up here, we want x to be positive. Right? So then from here, our setup is just from 0 to 4. And then we're still, we still have circles, so we're going to end up squaring this. All right, and so our volume is going to be... Don't, don't forget the pi. This is one that's easy to forget. Don't forget the pi um, because we're talking about area of a circle. Kind of keep that grounded perspective. And then we're going to just go from there. All right. Um, let's finish this up. Did I do it by hand? I did. Of course I did. All right. So that's since uh, square root of y squared is just y. When I integrate that, that's y squared over 2 from 4 to 0. And then it's just a matter. Obviously, the zero is not going to give me anything. But um, 4 squared is 16. 16 by 2 is 8. So my answer is 8 pi. And I did throw the units cubed on there. Okay. Cubic units, however you want to do it. Okay. Questions on that? Hundred percent. Well, just in time for that. Let's make it a little harder. All right, now we're going to talk about the holes in them. There's going to be a disc with a hole in it, so those are called washers. Okay. 
so the, the key here is that it's being revolved about a line which is not one of its boundaries. So in the other examples, one of the boundaries is what we're revolving around. So, so when, I, when I rotate it, it's just touching itself sort of all the time when it comes back around. Here now there's going to be a gap, right? We're going to revolve it around um, some space, really. And that's where that hole is going to be created, right? And so conceptually, all we're going to do is we're going to subtract out the hole, right? We're going to we're going to we're going to calculate the volume the same way that we did, and then we're going to subtract the hole out, and then that's it. So there's really an extra step, right? You're going to you're you're essentially going to find two volumes. You're going to find the volume of this sort of outer shape, and then you're going to find the volume of the hole, the inner shape, and you're just gonna subtract them, and that will give you the volume, okay? That's conceptually what we're doing here, right? And so they give us a, a little formula if this helps you think about it this way. Um, maybe it will help you. <clears throat> because you have this outer radius and an inner radius. And you can think about it also this way, if you want to. Okay, if this is helpful to you. Oops. Okay, you could say that these are the same thing. Oops. Rather than necessarily combining them, oops, uh, let's just say dx or dy. No, don't do that. I'm just... In I'm just leave it as dx just for the sake of argument for now. Okay, just in terms of thinking, about it, I know the way they give the formula is is one integral, but if conceptually you need to think about it as I'm subtracting out the other volume as two separate integrals, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. But again, the idea being I've got this outer solid, then I'm gonna take a, a core out of it, if you will and subtract that off. And that's what the washer formula is. So if you're good with the disc part, this is not really that much different. You do have to be able to see where that hole occurs, and then from there it's pretty straightforward, okay? It's up to you how you wanna think about it. I know a lot of times this one's easier because we like to, I don't say easier, simpler, because it's only one integral instead of two, but conceptually they're the same thing. All right. So, and most of these are setups, don't actually solve, okay? Um, so example seven, we've, we're gonna set up an integral for um, the regions. Two, we've got, our, we've got our sort of function that we're gonna be using, and then uh, what we're gonna uh, bound it by and revolve it about. These definitely you wanna sketch. I think you want to see them, okay? The, the easier, it's easier to figure out where the hole's going to be if you can see it. Now this problem they gave us the sketch, so that's not a big deal. This is kind of what we're at. so. This is what I'm going back to Sophia to your. Question. This is sort of what they're going to identify as, in this case dx. Okay. So dx, the change in x, the width, that's going to be um, what you're, what we're really going to do is we're going to imagine that it was a solid about y equals 1. And then we're going to nix that part there. That's kind of the approach, conceptually. We're going to envision that the whole thing was solid and is actually bounded by that. And then we're going to, we're going to chop this section out. Okay? That's really conceptually what the idea is here. Um, now, one of the things, and I like how the book does this, they identify our outer radius, and that was that capital R, or the line when I extended it all the way down. 
and then we have that sort of inside radius or the radius that we're gonna chop out, cut out. And that was the part that I kind of X'd out in my drawing, right? I think getting in a habit of drawing both of those will make this easier to do for you. Now, if you don't have any problems, because we're all in different places what we can visualize, right? This is, this is abstract stuff. And this is oftentimes where some people get lost a little bit because some of you can visualize this very easily. Some of you maybe struggle with it a little bit. And so to me, if you know you're really strong at this, you probably don't have to draw all the R's up there. Um, but if you find it helpful, I encourage you to do it. It takes a little more time, of course, but you know, a lot of these aren't actually asking you to solve it. Okay. Now, um, this radius here, okay, this y value is just this. Okay, so my the big R from the parabola all the way down to I'm sorry, I take that back. Um, is from here to this is the this is the x-axis here, all right. What I'm going to have to do is add on a negative 1 to it, or a 1, because I want the actual distance, okay? And then from here, again, I've got a negative 1 there, okay? So here's uh, how we have to kind of look at this. So I'm going to set it up, and I'm going to solve for the big R and then the little r, and then we can set up the integration, okay? So... What I really do here, this big R, is my function y minus the negative 1. So like I said, it ends up being a plus 1. But I, I think I'm going to leave it like this. Maybe I change it to a plus when we put it in the integral. Okay. So again, all I'm doing is looking at this distance. From here is the negative x squared plus x minus the negative 1. And then this distance is just 1. Okay. And if you think about it in terms of if you could visualize a solid, we have a cylinder <coughs> with radius 1 that is going to be, it's like taking, taking like a core sample. Maybe you guys know stuff about that from science class. Yeah, and, and yeah, if you want to think about it that way too, uh, x equals 0 minus negative 1, that's another way to think about it, okay? So now my setup, just remember that it's squared still. There's still disks. We're still talking about circles, okay? We're going to go from 0 to 1, All right? So here is my big R. Here is my little r, and that's all we have to do. Sorry about that. So the, they give us the boundary of y equals 0, okay, which is the x-axis. And so when I look at this, um, you know, they show us, well, essentially when I set this equal to 0 and solve it, I probably should do that. You're right. So let's do that over here. So 0, I'm going to use a different color. So 0 equals negative x squared plus x, and then, so I'm just going to factor out an x, so x equals 0 and 1. Yeah, I should have shown that. I did not. One of the things that you're going to see as I move through these problems is I was, I, I'm going to tell you don't rely on the graph, right? Because the graph, it looks pretty clear that it's 0 to 1, and I think I did that. So we should include this, yes. Okay. Just to demonstrate that those are the limits of integration. Okay? All right. Let's keep going. 
so we have the same function, functions, and so we know that we can still go from zero to one. So that's already done. But now instead of rotating it about the line y equals negative one, we're gonna rotate it about the line y equals two. All right, so we're gonna have, instead of having a, um, it was sort of like a, a ball with a hole through it, the last one. This one is gonna be like a, it's almost gonna look like this. Think, bless you, bless you. I think that's what it's gonna look like, something like that, with a hole cut through the middle of it. Nope, no it's not. It's gonna be solid on the outside. That's what the inside of it's gonna kinda of look like that. There'll be holes like that. I don't know. I I like to try to visualize them when I can. On the fly is never a good idea. <laughs> All right, let's set up our R's and then uh then we'll basically be done. So for for starters, okay. Here's the way I label my R's, okay? So the big R from the line y equals zero all the way to the line y equals two, right? So that really has nothing to do with the function that we have. That's the little r that has to do with the function. So this one's a little trickier, right? The, the big R is easy, what is it? Two. Okay, that one's easy. Now the little r is not just negative x squared plus x. What is it? How do I come up with that length? Two minus. Two minus, exactly. So I'm gonna go two minus that because the uh, bigger value is two compared to the y value at any point given on the curve. All right, so go ahead and finish setting that up. So my setup again from zero to one. So my big R two squared minus all of that squared dx and we're good to go from there. Okay, questions on that. All right, here's where it's gonna to start to get a little trickier when we, when we have this, um, instead of having a horizontal boundary or a vertical boundary, we're gonna have a boundary, and this is more likely to have, this is you know, more applicable to things you'll see, where the boundaries are another function, okay? Um, in this case, the first thing we're gonna do is rotate it about the x-axis. So my, my top boundary, if you will, is the line y equals x plus two. That's the y value of all these points. And then, my y value of my, my sort of bottom boundary is y equals x squared, okay? Now, here's where finding those limits of integration is really important and solving for it and not trusting what the, um, what the graph looks like. All right, so my holes for this are gonna come in this area here. We're gonna have a hole in here and we're gonna have a hole in here if I just rotated it about. And so how those holes are determined are based off of that other uh, parabola, all right? Here's my R, okay? My big R is just the line um, y equals x plus two. And then the little r is the distance between the x squared and the x-axis, okay? So we're just gonna be subtracting x squared minus one. So my big R is x plus two, little r is just the x squared. The trick here really is just about finding the limits of integration. And so my set, I kind of start like this without putting the limits up there, and then we're gonna solve them, okay? And the way that we solve those is we're looking for the um, solution to the system, right? The points of intersection. So I'm gonna set those two equal to each other, and then um, it's a quadratic, I'm gonna bring everything over, solve it, and 
so uh, my limits of integration end up being negative one and two. So the, the, the graph wouldn't have been a horrible, it's not a horrible representation of what those x's should be. And then that's how we end up, okay? Like I said, I know I'm going through that fast. All right, so let's go one more, okay? Um, this time, instead of um, rotating it about the x-axis, we're going to rotate it about the line y equals 4, okay? So this is just another, there's nothing really fancy about this one. Okay, so there's my line y equals 4. And notice that it does go through that uh, intersection, right? Because when I look at this for x equals 2, y equals 4, okay? When x equals 2 here, y equals 4. So it does actually go through that. So it's just a matter of identifying uh, your big R and your small r, okay? So my big R is from in this case, the parabola to the line y equals 4, okay, because we're going to rotate it this way. And then my small r is going to be the inside one. Limits or integration are still the same. We're still rotating it vertically, and so it's just a matter of flipping that all around. Now, um, what is this big r? What is this distance? You know what? I, I, I'm looking. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the way I drew that. Hold on. Um, hold on. Yeah, no, I don't like the way I drew it. Hold on. Yeah, I'm fixing it. Hold on. It should be more like, all right, I'm just going to redraw it. Yeah, I have it. It should be, I'm going to draw it like this. Yeah, it, sh it should be more like this. Yeah. Oh, come on. I made it, make it look like it was going to the uh, x-axis when I sh should have made it go to like the vertex. And I don't like that one either. All right, well, you get the point, right? It's just like, should have been like that, touching the, all right, I can't draw that stupid brace thing. There, any of these are R. Good now? I screwed that up the first time. I apologize. Okay, so what is that distance? Four. Minus, Minus x squared. The way I had it drawn originally, it was 4, which was in the, I put it in the wrong place. Yes, it's 4 minus x squared. That is the big R. And forget that it's back there because I, I will fix this for another time. <laughs> okay, just ignore this part now. So it's 4 minus x squared because... This is x squared. And then the little r is 4 minus x plus 2. Okay, limits of integration are still negative 1 to 2. Okay, and my uh, big R minus my little r. Watch your parentheses on this. Eventually when you have to solve these, right, notice how many parentheses I had to add in here. So I've got my big set of parentheses for this subtraction, but then I have multiple sets of parentheses inside. Just be careful of that, especially when you do eventually have to solve them on your calculator.